come back to the another new concept from the second PUC meet. In this basic session, I'm introducing the another chapter that is a strategies for food enhancement and production. So, what are the strategies we are applying to increase the food production? What is the necessity first? What is the necessity to increase the food production? Very simple. Over the period of time on the globe, population will be increased. About human population, I'm talking. Over the population, what comes out of that? Problems. Imbalance between the existing people and their food sources. Apart from their stay and other uh, requirements, food is a very fundamental thing. When the food production is decreasing, as the population is increasing, definitely this is imbalance. Due to this imbalance, one should involve to uh, create some strategies to increase the food production to the level of the population, then only it can be continued. So, from which departments we have to be gathered these strategies? From the animal breeding, how different types of animals are helping humankind to fulfill the food requirements. Apart from the food requirements, employment, commercial scale and business opportunities and lots of benefits. Apart from the animal side, plant breeding, the farming, agriculture, different techniques, disease resisting and pest resisting, high yield production, what are the varieties to be continued, to be deleted, to be modified? Genetically manipulated organisms like GMO, genetically manipulated animals, genetically manipulated plants also, as this part we discussed in the biotechnology applications. Apart from the plants and animals, single cell proteins, some algae, and tissue culture methods, all they will be discussed. First couple of minutes, let me introduce the chapter neatly. The topic name is strategies for enhancement for food production. In that, the first thing today we are going to discuss about animal husbandry. So, the one who taken care for animal growth and development for the production of and the benefits towards the mankind is called, or process is called animal husbandry. In that animal husbandry, animal breeding is so important. From the animal breeding concept, definitely every time in the need, one question is arising. In that dairy farm management, we have to discuss. In the dairy farm management, what type of uh, breeds we have to be selected? Our milk producing breeds are nothing but uh, 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 agriculture supporting breeds, broads. And from the bulls as well as cows, what type of uh, superior breeds will be there? How does the bulls play a very important role for the maintaining the quality of the over the next generations? And disease resistant bulls are important to select for the superior individuals. On the other hand, cows, nothing but a jersey. And bulls, if you see that red sindhi. So, jersey sindhi will come over there while the cross breeding time. So, how many milky breeds are there in the India? from the cows department as well as the buffalo department. All they will be discussed in the dairy farm management. What are the good practices to be taken to get good yield of milk? And what type of milk products are there? And breeding types, in this breeding type, we gonna discuss that is inbreeding, outbreeding. So what is inbreeding? Inbreeding means mating of two individuals that are belongs to same species within the four to six generations. Their ancestors are also same. Just like in human uh, uh, community, that is about uh, uh, relative marriages. In the same family, uh, suppose uh, parents are marrying their daughter with mother's brother, nothing but uncle. So this is a close relative marriage. Next generation, next generation, over the generation. In this, germplasm will be suppressed. Quality will be reduced. In case of animals, the production will be less. Homozygosity will be increased. 
same type of cytoplasm germplasm qualities are because there is a homozygous it is also called inbreeding depression in which production will be reduced that is a minus point in the inbreeding whereas outbreeding outbreeding consists of again three out cross cross breed and interspecific and interspecific what is outcross outcross is the type of outbreeding of animal breeding in which two same type of species but their ancestors are different it is absolutely opposite to the inbreeding which one outcross in the inbreeding within 4 to 6 generations can be involved but in the outcross other than 4 to 6 generations they are not related to the same generation marriages between two different families their histories are not at all equal so that is outcross in the outcross superior of male mating with the superior of the female for the best production before I just said that inbreeding depression homozygous is increased in here that will be easily eradicated by the outbreeding by one mating of outcross homozygous T inbreeding depression can be removed next another part in the outbreeding is crossbreed crossbreed means what very simple here out of religious marriages nothing but not in the same community the religious or Hindu married the Muslim or Muslim married Hindu or Christian different religious or uh, for the better quality here example I can give you uh, Jersey cow is mating with the red sindhi then jersind is the production as well as sheep israel is a new production that is also crossbreed so these are coming by the crossbreed crossbreed production is better than outcross why because both are superior and their ancestors are not same next interspecific their species is completely different a donkey male donkey is mating with the female horse then mule will come male donkey cross with a female horse result mule whereas male horse mating with the female donkey henna will come both are interspecific they are important again understand means sterile these two are sterile So about the breeding, all these steps will be discussed. And artificial insemination. In, in the human uh, reproductive health, we discussed artificial insemination. Right? Next, beekeeping. Beekeeping is also called apiculture. In this apiculture, how bees are going to be rare? What are the uh, different uh, important breeds in the India? Apis indica and apis carinata. Nothing but honey bee culture. So what are the precautions to be taken care? For the good quality of honey production, we will learn in the beekeeping. Next, fisheries, rearing of fishes is fisheries, rearing of aquatic organisms called that is aquaculture. Aquaculture is different in that every uh, water organism comes over there, but in the fisheries only fishes come so. It is also called pisciculture. Now, poultry, poultry is nothing but fowls, nothing but birds. For the chicken, for the eggs, broilers and in the poultry different types of uh, birds can be uh, red. So what are the measures we have to take and fair? What type of uh, uh, rules and what are the regulations to be taken care for the poultry, for the good production? What are the important breeds also we are learning? So now you are going to watch a video in that all these things will be discussed very detailedly. After that video, just go through the textbook lines of only animal breeding. Understand? It is a very social aspect, but all questions come from the textbook only. So, after the video, you prepare from the textbook lines and attend the assignment tomorrow. Then, the very next class, we go through the plan. Human beings have always been dependent on animals such as cattle, birds, pigs, sheep and bees
for products like milk, eggs, wool, meat and honey. With an increase in population worldwide, an increase in food production is also required. This can be achieved through animal husbandry and plant breeding. Animal husbandry refers to the practice of breeding and rearing livestock that are useful to human beings and includes cattle or dairy farming, poultry farming, beekeeping and fisheries. Plant breeding refers to the manipulation of plant species to create desired plant types that are better suited to cultivation, giving better yields and that are disease resistant. Did you know that India and China together contribute more than 70% to the livestock population in the world? However, as the productivity is very low, their contribution to the world farm produce is a mere 25%. To increase the overall quality and productivity of animal produce, Strategies and techniques to enhance food production need to be initiated along with proper management of farms and farm animals. Let us look at the management practices followed in dairy and poultry farms where traditional methods have been combined with innovative technologies to boost food production. Dairy farms rear animals for milk and milk products. The management methods used to increase production without compromising on the quality of milk is called dairy farm management. One of the key factors for increased milk production is breed selection. Good breeds have high yielding potential and high resistance to disease. Apart from the breed, proper sheltering, feeding and cleaning of cattle are essential to obtain high yields of milk. Sheltering involves providing a clean and disease-free environment with sufficient ventilation and water for the animals. It is also very important to keep a check on the health of the cattle through regular visits of a veterinary doctor. Their feeding is carried out in a scientific way involving the supply of fodder that is checked for specific quantity and quality. Cleaning the cattle and their shelters is also important to avoid any risk of germs and diseases. Apart from cleanliness, hygienic measures should be followed to keep the cattle and the handler clean. To avoid any contamination during milking, storing and transporting milk from the farm. Nowadays, with new technologies such as milking machines that are used to harvest milk, most of these processes are mechanized and the possibility of contamination is greatly reduced compared to the old method of milking by hand. In addition, the proper functioning of a dairy farm can be monitored by periodical inspection and record keeping. Just as dairy farms are used to rear milk yielding animals, poultry farms are managed to raise domestic fowls or birds such as chicken, duck, turkey and geese. These birds are reared for their meat and eggs. In fact, poultry refers to the meat of these birds and is sometimes used to denote the meat of all kinds of birds. Poultry farms also employ the management practices of dairy farming such as proper breed selection, shelter, 
feed and health care like milk chicken and eggs are also consumed by human beings which is how bird diseases spread to human beings as well bird flu or avian flu is a very common disease if the chickens get infected by such diseases they need to be properly culled and disposed of however ensuring proper hygienic shelter for the birds nutritious feed and regular health care along with good quality breed selection will result in an increase in chicken and egg production in this manner proper poultry farm and dairy farm management along with strategies and techniques to ensure good yield and quality will help increase the overall quality and productivity of animal produce animal breeding is the controlled propagation of animals to achieve desirable qualities of farm animals and increase the yield of these animals the term breed refers to a group of animals within a species related by ancestors and possessing many similar characters such as appearance behavior and size for example jersey and leghorn are very popular breeds of cattle and chicken used for breeding animal breeding is divided into two main categories inbreeding and outbreeding inbreeding is breeding between animals belonging to the same breed with a common ancestor whereas outbreeding is breeding between animals belonging to different breeds or between the same breed but with different ancestors or between different species let us learn more about inbreeding animals selected for inbreeding are of superior quality and are closely related for 4 to 6 generations a superior quality cow is one that produces more milk and a superior bull is one that is a strong draft animal and gives rise to superior offspring subsequently mating is carried out between offspring which have superior qualities thus inbreeding increases homozygosity in animals that is it results in a pure line of animals with desired characters this is similar to mendel's experiment that yielded homozygous pure lines in pea plants inbreeding also helps in the expression of desirable characters and the elimination of undesirable characters in the offspring however inbreeding can increase the chance of expression of recessive genes which are harmful if inbreeding among closely related breeds is continued it can result in inbreeding depression which is reduced fertility and productivity now let's learn more about outbreeding outbreeding can be carried out in three ways outcrossing crossbreeding and interspecific hybridization outcrossing is mating between animals of the same breed but with no common ancestors for up to 4 to 6 generations on either side This type of breeding overcomes inbreeding depression. Crossbreeding is mating between animals of superior quality belonging to different breeds to produce hybrids possessing superior qualities of both their parents. For example, Jersey with a long lactation period and Red Sindhi with high disease resistance are mated. for a new breed with both the desired characters called jersind the new breed obtained is then subject to inbreeding to increase the herd population 
Another example of crossbreeding is the cross between Bicaneri ewes and Merino rams to form a new sheep breed, Hisar Dale. The third type of outbreeding is interspecific hybridization, where animals of two different species are mated. For example, mating between a male donkey and a female horse to form a new breed, a mule. Although most new breeds are infertile, they have high economic value. Both inbreeding and outbreeding can also be carried out using controlled breeding experiments. Artificial insemination is one such method. In artificial insemination, semen is first collected from the superior male. The semen is then injected into the reproductive tract or vagina of the female animal or can be frozen for future use. Thus, artificial insemination is carried out to overcome problems in natural breeding and also to carry out mating between animals that are geographically separated. However, the success of animal breeding using artificial insemination is low and so new techniques like multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology or MOET were developed. MOET involves the administration of gonadotrophic hormones like FSH and LH to female animals, which induce maturation of follicles resulting in superovulation. Superovulation is the production of six to eight eggs instead of one egg. The superovulated female is mated with a superior male either through natural mating or artificial insemination. This results in fertilization of all the eggs. When the fertilized eggs reach the 8 to 32 cell stage, they are non-surgically removed and then implanted into different surrogate mothers for further development in a process called embryo transfer. Now the female animal can be used for superovulation once again. In this manner, MOET helps increase the herd population containing desirable characters in a short span of time. MOET is widely carried out in animals such as cattle, buffaloes and sheep. So different techniques such as artificial insemination and MOET along with various inbreeding and outbreeding methods are employed in animal breeding to produce offspring with superior qualities. Animal husbandry includes beekeeping and fisheries in addition to cattle and poultry farming. Beekeeping, also known as apiculture, is the rearing of honeybees. In artificial beehives called apiaries for the commercial production of honey. Honey is highly nutritious and an important constituent of several medicines. Also, the apiaries in which honeybees live and nurture their young ones are a source of beeswax. Beeswax is used in cosmetics and polish. Due to the increasing demand for honey, beekeeping is done both on a small and large scale. In small scale beekeeping, one or two apiaries are kept in verandas or on rooftops. Whereas in large scale beekeeping, Many apiaries are used 
as the quality of the honey depends on the pasture available near the apiaries. Beekeeping is usually practiced near fruit plantations and cultivated fields. Honeybees act as pollinators by helping crops like sunflower during flowering. In turn, they get nectar from the flowers. As a result, farmers get a high yield in terms of crops as well as honey. The most commonly reared honeybee species is Apis indica, also called the Indian bee. Although beekeeping is easy, it does require some knowledge and training that is provided by certain organizations. Some tips to be kept in mind are knowing the nature of the honeybees, selecting a desirable location for the beehives, controlling swarms, managing beehives during different climatic conditions, and collecting honey and beeswax. Following these tips will help carry out beekeeping successfully. Like beekeeping, fisheries are another part of animal husbandry. And relates to the rearing, catching and selling of aquatic animals such as fish and shellfish. As fish contain more proteins and less fat, they are preferred to other meats. Most commonly eaten freshwater fish include katla, rohu, and the common carp, while marine fish include hilsa, mackerel, and pomfret. Fisheries also provide products such as cod liver oil, which is a nutritional supplement, and pearl oysters that have commercial value. Consequently, it forms the livelihood of many people in coastal areas of India. As seafood like fish, prawn, crab and lobster are always in demand, Several techniques like aquaculture and pisciculture are employed to increase their yield. Aquaculture is the cultivation of aquatic animals and plants for food. Whereas pisciculture refers specifically to fish farming. This dramatic increase in seafood production was called the Blue Revolution compared to the Green Revolution that brought about an increase in agricultural production. I hope you understand the concept. This is a very easy and also important for the need. Definitely one question from animal breeding, one question from plant breeding or heresy.